I was watching a video by, uh, I think it's C Gem TV. I'm not quite sure it's pronounced. Um, anyway, I'll put the link in the information box. But he was talking about uh, um, a visit he made to Chicago as for, it was, it was a meeting that Google, YouTube had organized for YouTube partners. And he was talking about his experiences there and it sounded like it was really uh, in, uh, influential and, and beneficial for him. But it was, uh, and it was quite an interesting video, but at the same time I found it really deeply depressing. <laughs> deeply depressing. Because the, uh, certainly the impression that I got was that it was entirely oriented around a broadcasting model or about the, the uh, you know, how to make YouTube function both for partners and for YouTube Google organization. Uh, that the only way to make that functionality better would be to increase subscriptions and views for um, you know, people who are participating in YouTube. And that effectively YouTube would be a kind of, uh, well, be a, a competitive platform for popularity. And that's, that's essentially what, uh, what we're doing here. Uh, and that success is measured for the user, for the user success in, is measured in terms of subscriptions and views and that uh, and that success completely coincides with the metrics of success that YouTube Google would want because that of course is translates directly into advertising revenue presumably uh, yeah I just find that really a bit depressing really for two reasons firstly because you know um, you know I, I'm as a much of a sucker for subscription rates as anybody else, you know what I mean, when my subscription rate goes up and it's somewhere over 2,000 now, you know, I get a real buzz out of that and it's trivial and stupid, but I can't help it and I'm sure I'm not the only one that succumbs to that. You know, and there's no financial incentive in it for me or most people, other people I would imagine, there's no career advancement, for me at least, uh, attached to YouTube, if anything the reverse would be true. So, um, so this buzz thing that I get from my subscription list going num numbers going up is it's just electronic dick waving, really. That's all that's happening, I can, and I'm fully aware of that. You know, I'm just kind of swinging my swollen membership around and uh, and feeling quite good about myself as a result. So, but it is trivial, uh, and it's slightly in, it, irritating that the whole uh, Google business model segues perfectly into that that feeling. Now, I'm not saying that people who, who have big channels who get lots of subscribers are making bad content. Of course not. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about at all. Although I think some of them do. Uh, it's just about the, uh, you know, where the value is. And here I don't just, I, I mean value in both senses. I mean, you know, the, the, the value of the content in terms of its, uh, I don't know, intellectual, philosophical, scientific, um, you know, personally developmental, whatever kind of uh, set of criteria you would use for that kind of intrinsic value of the content, but also the value in terms of its um, monetary value for, for Google. You know, it's, it's that, that's the, that's the, the metric. And I don't like that because I think there's other values here and it's, it, it depresses me slightly that Google isn't even considering the possibilities uh, that might be mined by you know, finding a business or an economic model which matches the values uh, of the content that I just mentioned, you know, those criteria con the values the, and the content and the, the value of connectivity, the value of a social network as opposed to the value of a, of a popular broadcast. Uh, yeah, I, I, would have, I would have hoped that Google were at least thinking about possible ways to exploit that. Oh, maybe, maybe they are. Maybe this the partners meeting isn't the right place to talk about that. I mean, certainly for myself, and this is just my my own opinion, really. Certainly for myself, I would be willing to pay a small amount to gain access to networking features. I would be willing to do that. I mean, for example, I'm on Blip, I'm on Blip TV right now, and I'm a pro, which means <laughs> pro. Fat chance. It's an odd understanding of the word pro when you have to pay the organisation. I thought being a pro is when the organisation paid you, but never mind. Anyway, I've got a pro account, which means I pay five quid a month. And that gives me access to certain features, like uh, I can make videos private and I can time delay their release. I haven't used it yet, but if I can think of a way to, to use that, I will do. You know, so I can schedule a series of releases of videos. But those, those, like, those tools are essentially broadcasting tools. You know, scheduled release times for videos is a broadcast tool. 
uh, and blip tv that doesn't have any kind of additional um, any additional tools that you can pay for that would increase its uh, its networking value or increasing its its capacity to um, engage in you know as I say those kind of social social content drives things we've talked about or I've talked about before uh, and of course YouTube Google doesn't seem to be even in the, in the game for that it seems to be entirely bound up to a uh, an advertising revenue model which is a shame really yeah so as I say I could I would willingly pay for uh, a small amount, not a lot, to access networking tools. Uh, I would also, you know, if, if I mean, Google could use the partnership scheme for that. You know, I would imagine if one of the popular, one of the popular um, YouTubers, you know, people whose subscriptions are over 10,000, let's say. I mean, if, if one of those uh, people opened a little private network. Let's, let's let's call them private networks. It's not a great term. If someone opened a, one of those people opened a private network, people would be clamouring to be to be involved in that. You know, it's the Amazing Atheists second channel. No, that's a bad example actually. Second channels don't work. But if if the Amazing Atheist had access to a series of tools, a, a private net, a, let's call it a private networking tools, so people could a small number of people could. Uh, pay to be part of it and pay to, you know, if assuming they were allowed by TJ to join, then uh, you know, people would fall over themselves to join that. You know, and similarly with all of the uh, the large uh, the large YouTubers, uh, YouTubers with large subscriptions, people would pay through the nose to that for that kind of access. Yeah, it's just, I just think it's a business model that YouTube should consider, really. What do you think, guy? Here he is. Are you networked? Are you a networked dog? No. Nope.